It's time for Fantasy Football Semi Pros. Let's do it. Welcome back to our second episode. Nailed it. <laughs> Welcome back to our second episode of Fantasy Football Semi Pros. Wide receiver group two. Yep, wide receiver group number two. Group two. So, as we said in the first episode, or we may not have said it, we're not doing these in any particular order. Nope. Just uh, We are kind of mixing them up a little bit. A list of 20 wide receivers, a list of 20 running backs will be next week-ish. Yep. So, we got seven. So, next week, another, we got six receivers and seven running backs. And then after that will be 14 seven, running backs. Seven running backs, six running backs. Oh, yeah. Good call. Duh. My math is off, man. Okay. It's that's fine. Good. Well, might as well jump into it. Dude, might as well. Great podcast in there. (laughs) Thanks. All right. So, last episode, we covered Jameson Williams, Jahan Dotson, John Mechie, Mm -hmm. Al Pierce, David Bell, Justin Robinson, and... No, Justin Ross. Sorry, Justin Ross. Eric Azukanama. 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 So, in this episode, we're going to start with Chris Olave. Chris Olave from the dreaded Ohio State. And it's not the Ohio State, it's Ohio State. Yeah, you don't get to put a D in front of anything. It's just another college, university around the Americas. Get over yourself. <laughs> so, Chris Olave, I expected to like him more than I did. Now, I'm not saying Olave is a bad receiver by any stretch. I was actually impressed by him. I'm not saying I wasn't impressed, because I still have him in my top five, but I was expecting to have him a little bit higher, uh, based off how everybody was talking about him. It, it, off of that, excuse me, sorry, come down on my monster high, I guess. Um, <laughs> I, I think he was overshadowed by, uh, is it Jackson, Garrett, Garrett Jack, Wilson? Jackson Smith and the Jigma? Oh, the Jackson rookie. Smith and Jigma. Yeah, that kid was really good, and uh, Garrett Wilson. Yeah, and Garrett Wilson. Yeah, Jackson but... Smith at Jigma, so he's a guy to keep an eye on. For well, next year. probably next year. Yeah, he's gonna come out early. He's gonna have to. Yeah, he, he looked good, but <laughs> but Olave still was to me. He was impressive. He's definitely a top five in my book. Yeah, Olave. He was he was very good. If not uh, top three, he has very very good separation skills. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. The dude's fast, and he's he's extremely elusive. Yeah, and so one of the notes I had on him, this kind of goes along with it, he can make plays behind the line of scrimmage, Mm -hmm. he can make plays in the middle part of the field, he can make plays deep. Yeah, yeah, I mean, all around threat, that's what I have, Mm -hmm. is just, anytime the ball is in Chris Olave's hand, he can score. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter where he gets it. No. One thing I did, a couple things I did have against him on this, though, he's not great with contested catch. He's going to be the guy that needs to get that separation to make that catch. Well, I I have he, – he can catch in traffic okay. But, yeah, if it's a 50-50 ball, mm-hmm. mm, well, well, it's yep. more like a 20-75 yeah. in the defendant's favor. But I have – he he's not very physical, and he mm-hmm. won't try to run. He won't run through a tackle. And he doesn't have a wide catch radius. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I can – I can I, – I would agree with that, but – on the flip side of that, I, I think he's a smart player, so he's able to find the open open spots and in, in zone coverages, which which do you you really need that at the next level, you, right? You need that in the NFL. You mm-hmm. the zones are gonna the open areas and zones are gonna be a lot smaller in the NFL just because the athletes are better on defense. But he does that. Um, he's really good at it, and a lot of the film I saw on him, he he seems to be open. Yeah, just. He's just open, so he yeah. doesn't really need to that catch while contest like contested catches because he's always open. It seems like, and he he's very good at tracking the deep ball. Oh that's, yeah, that's that's a oh, skill yeah. in itself. Yeah, like I yeah. I, per, I personally didn't play receiver, but me neither. I can compare this to baseball. We had a conditioning where we toss our coach the ball, we take off running, and he launches it, and we gotta find it and catch it. I couldn't do it. And that's hard to do itself. It was probably my favorite condition. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the most fun <laughs> conditioning ever. But, man, I cannot catch a fly ball with a baseball and ball. <laughs> just trying to high point – or just trying to track that ball, it's it's a feat in itself. 
That's why I played third base. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, that, and, and we saw, you know, Jamar Chase struggle in preseason last year with, with tracking the ball. Yeah. And uh, once he got a hold of it, you know, we, we saw what he did this year as a rookie. But, I, yeah, to come in with that kind of uh, just ability, mm-hmm. um, already a step ahead of what might be the rest of the field, it, it, that's good. So, I mean, I didn't watch a whole lot of Ohio State this year, but I watched enough. <clears throat> and yeah, they had a lot of weapons. At if you season. asked, if you asked me, who's who's faster, Olave or Wilson? I I would say uh, Olave. Wilson actually ran the faster forty in the combine. I just think I think Olave <laughs> just looks smoother in game, mm-hmm. which is who cares? Yeah. I don't care what your oh, forty is. If I know. if you if you can't, but that just move. kind of surprised me. <laughs> right? No, yeah. They, because Olave looked like he was faster. Wilson just, I think he ran better routes, and he he's good at contested catch. He can get out yep. there. Yeah, but that's another. <clears throat> and it, it just it kind of surprised me that that how that worked out. No, and, and Olave's a. I still feel like he blocked downfield. Uh, at least he put effort into trying to block downfield. And a lot of these guys that I watched this year, they didn't really care to try. It was about fifty yeah. fifty. Actually, I had the note on here. Looks to be a better blocker than teammate. Talking about Garrett Wilson, <laughs> <laughs> like he he at least tried, and so I know Olave. He sat out their their uh, bowl game, and Ohio State fans haven't had to deal with that much because they've usually been in championship, yeah, playoff, yeah. and playoff. Apparently, Olave that came down to the last minute. He was in in the city for their bowl game, practicing with the team. He was with the team, like even though it, it announced it earlier. Apparently, according to I think it's Coach Day, he wasn't sure that he was actually going to sit out because he just wanted to be there with his team. Right, and that that itself that tells you a lot about the player. Yeah, that's good character, mm-hmm. and that and that's something to be admirable. But I mean, yeah, and I've had discussions with multiple people that either agree or disagree with me about you know college players sitting out bowl games that don't do anything but make schools money and conferences money and I mean we've talked about it ourselves and like why we said we understand it we don't necessarily like it no I mean yeah it and takes because you're expecting to see this team play yeah, there's really only all the one parts. way to limit that get rid of bowl games expand the college football playoff that's true too <laughs> 64 teams, March Madness, but in January. <laughs> I actually, so I can't remember where I saw it, but somebody did that. Like, if there was a 68 team college football God, playoff, that would bracket, be so. Why even play the season? I think I think Purdue was an 11 seed. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, yeah, I I still think Alave's in my top five. I think he is a mid to late first round pick. Oh, definitely, I agree. He is my fifth best receiver on here. And when I say mid to late first round pick, I just want everybody to understand that I'm going off of it's Dynasty Saturday, well, that, or it's Sunday, which we have to do next weekend because I have a wedding to go to. But I'm talking about twelve team leagues. Super, you said, yeah. and you mentioned twelve super teams, flex. super flex. Yeah. So yeah. But no, I agree. I believe Alave. He's. I think he's more of a. He's mid to late, possibly second round. And really, I would say late first. I'm trying to see what. So actually, this this one I have, they had him in the mid second. Wow. So they were more down on Olave than. That's a steal, in my opinion. That's a steal. So I mean, I think you could get him anywhere, mid to late first, early second. That's fair. It this this draft I think is going to be crazier than the past, just because we don't have those true standout quarterbacks. We don't. We have very few standout players. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I have Chris Olave as five, and I mean, I'm not gonna avoid him by any stretch. If he's there, Take after him. after those top four, he's definitely something I'm gonna be looking at. Definitely, I would agree with you. All right, our next receiver. I at one point had our this receiver ranked number one. I've since dropped him to three. Yeah, I was a little confused by that. You were really high on him. I mean, I, this guy's got great, great, great raw talent. Yep, we're talking about Traylon Burks here, our, our out of Arkansas. And and the worst part about watching some of these guys is is the quarterback play is so atrocious. Uh, the quarterback play is so bad. Uh, Justin Ross again. Mm-hmm. 
better quarterback, probably mm-hmm. better season, probably better draft stock, draft capital. But man, yeah, Traylon yeah. Burks has all the all the tangibles I will and the intangibles. Saying, these guys at the top of our lists, they're very close. We can just mention, and they're all we're not saying they're necessarily pieces. bad at anything, mm-hmm. but we're being we're nitpicking because that's what you have to do at this point. Uh, yeah, definitely, I would agree with you. And again, one of the things that kind of made me decide to drop him in my rankings is he gets lazy when he has to block. Yeah. Yep. I'm not saying he can't do it because you do see times where he does. Yeah, I have sporadically <clears throat> blocks downfield. Other times just doesn't do anything. <laughs> like he just doesn't. And then stops. I, I have it here. He gets lazy at running his routes sometimes. Yeah. I did. So, I mean, I know those are two small things. And blocking, who cares for fantasy? But this this <clears throat> Traylon Burks is one of those big wide receivers that the NFL seems to like a little bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at Michael Thomas, Calvin Calvin Johnson back in the day. Big wide receivers, Julio Jones, they do great. They have really long and successful careers, it seems like. But he's not very fast. Well, one of the things I liked about Traylon Burks, though, is it, he may not be fast. And the combine did kind of drop him a little bit because he didn't have a great performance there. But number one, he was used a lot for misdirection. I think he plays the game faster than what he is. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And I don't. I really don't put a lot of. I don't put a lot of. Stock in in forty times. Oh yeah, but I also have. He lined up not only out wide, but he lined up in the backfield a lot. He motioned in the backfield. He played Wildcat QB, so he's an overall. He's a versatile athlete. He's a very big and strong player um, and he just needs to not take have, plays off i have it in here like he can make people miss in the open field he's an athlete and another thing yeah. i liked about him is he can make that contested catch now, I, hey i have it too i don't think he's the best contested catch guy in this league and we'll probably talk we'll talk about that person next week more upside potential for catches and traffic <laughs> for receptions and traffic mm-hmm. but like, yeah he we said about Wave, he can beat people deep. He makes catches in traffic, but there is some potential still there, and he can make a play behind the line of scrimmage. The thing I have is he's a great, great ball carrier, uh, strong ball carrier. Vision isn't afraid to take hits mm-hmm. while he's running the ball. But Traylon Burks, like I said, I moved him down to my number three receiver. In in front of him, I have London and Wilson. And mm-hmm. I just think they're less like, like – I'm not saying any of these guys are for sure hits, but I think they're less likely to miss. Yeah. Hey, you know you know my thoughts on London. <laughs> He's my number <laughs> one in this class. Just, just because of his – I hope he comes back healthy, man. He's got more time than uh, Jameson Williams. But, yeah, definitely. I think – I still think Burks is a first-round wide receiver pick. Um, oh, Definitely. And if you and if he's there, sitting in the second round somehow in your league, you got to take. He's him not going to make it to the second round. If I'm just saying, we've seen some weird draft picks, and I've made some questionable draft picks before too. So, yep. hey man, if he's there, you got to take him. In. He's a first round guy to me. All right, so our next guy, we go to the blue turf, the Boise <laughs> State. This guy was fun to watch. For Khalil Shakir. Now, <clears throat> and this is what killed me. The two guys that we've said that have been fun to watch. There's only, only one film. One game. One film. Uh, but I have some similar notes on him. He occasionally, he lines up in the backfield. He lined he, up everywhere. He, he had her. rushes. Yeah. He had rushes from both the backfield and in the wide out. Spots. Right. He would motion in, yeah. He was also a return man, which yep. definitely helps that he can see the field early. Yeah, and, 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 and the crazy thing, and, and going off of that, being a ball carrier and a kick returner, he has great ball carrier vision. So when this guy has – he almost looks like a a running back that is a wide receiver. Kind of like a Debo. Debo Samuel. That's fair. Yeah. Um, not not necessarily the same size. But well, yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying play style. Like right. Yeah. I mean, and, and man, again, he – great zone read. Uh, he finds the open area. Yeah, I, I have knows when to sit sit when facing zone. Right. He knows when to sit yep. in his routes. And 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 the and, and he's elusive in space. 
I did. Yeah, I said speedy and shifty. Exceptional speed, very shifty. Um, not much of a blocker though, but he catches very well. Yep, and he's good with contested catch, from what I saw. Yeah, and he was uh, he was a lot of fun to watch. I just wish there was more. The thing uh, with him, film to, to watch on him. My thing with him is draft capital is going to be what tells you a lot with him. If he's a day two pick, I think he could be a round two pick for you. Yeah. If he's a day three pick, he's probably a third round flyer. Yeah. But like you said, he's a return man, so that could get him seen the field early. Yeah, and we and we saw what's his name from Jacksonville. He had some of those games where uh, Agnew, Jamal Agnew. Yeah, Agnew. Yeah, we saw what his if you played him the right mm-hmm. weeks, he was. Yeah. I mean, he made you look like a genius. <laughs> yeah. So Khalil Shakir, let's see, I have him right now as my 13th best wide receiver. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I'm intrigued by him, but. I have, I want to see more, and I want to see what his draft capital looks There's like. There's a lot of raw talent with this kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, d- d- he's fast. He's so fast, but he's also tough. Like I said, he's like a running back that plays wide receiver. Um. Yeah, and again, to, to just reiterate, so people don't get really mad at us when we take one of these guys with the number one dot one, and then you yell at us because he never pans out. <laughs> We don't know. We don't know where a he's gonna end up yet, right? We don't know who's gonna draft him or what day he's gonna be drafted, uh, and we don't know how they're gonna be utilized once they're in that system. So, but yeah, this kid has a lot of raw, raw talent. Like he's an athlete, man, and and like you said, I wish there was more film on this kid mm-hmm. to really get a feel for him. But from what I saw, it was against Nevada. I believe that's the game. I, it sounds right. I think. Nevada, I believe. No, boy, this was. I can't remember. This was uh, Brigham Young, BYU. BYU. Yeah, it, it's but been so a while fun to I've watch. Watched. So fun to watch him, and and yeah, I would say, depending on what day he's drafted in the, in the real life, in real life IRL draft, it depends on where you're going to take him. It's either a second rounder or a third round flyer. All right, so next we go back to the SEC conference for Georgia. Okay, and George Pickens, and. My mind changed on him. I didn't want to like him just from what I remember seeing during the season, just looking at his stats. I remember but, this year, he, I, I think he sat out last year. So, and actually I have maybe. some notes on that. <laughs> Number one, he may have some attitude issues. Mm-hmm. In 2019, he was suspended for the first half of the game due to a violation of team rules. He came into the game in the second half and was ejected for throwing a punch. This guy sounds like a winner. And the coach called him selfish and undisciplined. Yeah, that's not and something then, you want. So now that really changes all my And thoughts. then before this season, he tore his ACL in the spring, but he did return for the back half of the season. Mm-hmm. So he was recovering from an injury. I know fantasy football, we don't care. We don't pay attention to the attitude that the guys have, but – if they're not going to be playing, what, if they're not going to get snaps, that's really going to hurt your team. We've seen what mm. attitude can do with Antonio Brown. Right. Right. Uh, but based on talent alone. High risk, high reward there. <laughs> yeah. This Based on talent alone, he was good. I have. Man, my notes on this kid are he gr- gets great separation at the line of scrimmage. Was really fast at the snap, off the snap. I have, uh, he's, he's, a really, he's a good route runner. I, he, he's a – Again, raw talent, great mm-hmm. overall wide receiver. What you're looking for for a wide receiver he, one. He's good at high pointing the ball. Yeah, good size, good length. He's got exceptional size, man. He's, he's physical. A, mm-hmm. He's a he's a good blocker. Like you, that was actually something you saw him do. Yeah, and I have on the field. tries really hard to block downfield. That's what I have. Tries he, really hard to block. He downfield. has great hands, and he's tough to tackle when he has the ball. Yeah, big physical player, breaks tackles, not afraid of contact. But yeah, great speed. I mean, hearing some of the attitude stuff and what his coach said about him, I don't think I'm taking a first round shot on George Pickens. No, this this is one of the there, again. He hasn't had a very in depth college career, right? Due to injury, suspensions, suspensions, all that other stuff. There's not a lot of stuff out there on him. And you're right. The <clears throat> the look, the skill set's there mm-hmm. to to be a playmaker in the NFL. Yeah, it's there, but you're right. How is he gonna get? Is he gonna get the chance? Is he gonna He's get gonna get the chance. If you got the talent, you get the chance. But you, 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 okay, you're right. You're right. 
Especially you know, all all the Cincinnati Bengals, <laughs> mm-hmm. all those troublemakers on but, the on the. Road. I mean, I have Pickens. I have him ranked as my s- seventh best wide receiver, right after David Bell. And honestly, he might be a better receiver than Bell. Uh, but I just think we haven't seen enough with him this year due to injury. You're right, and I, ah, uh, yeah. I my heart says David Bell is the best thing that's ever happened since sliced bread, <laughs> and everybody should draft him one dot one. But there's that's just not realistic because he just kind of seems to do well, but he doesn't have any of the great things. But yeah, I'm not taking a chance on him unless he's at third. George Pickens. I I t- I take him in the middle of the second probably. I'm what I'm holding off. I'm being more hesitant because I need a surefire thing in the second round. And and when I say surefire thing, somebody who I know is going to get a shot and stick with it and not waste it if it comes to them. Okay. So, yeah, I'm saying third-round flyer at best for me. He's got it. He's a great athlete. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just not willing to take that shot unless it's a third-rounder. All right. So, now we're going to go back out west to Nevada. We're going everywhere. With Romeo Dubs. <laughs> and, yes, I made sure that was the correct pronunciation of his name, Dubs. Yeah, this kid. This guy, he wow. he actually, he really intrigued me. And I think, you mentioned raw talent. I think he still has a lot of that. He has a lot of untapped potential mm-hmm. right now. And my note right now is, he's a round three pick with upside. Right. Right. But here's my thing, man. Uh, <clears throat> he's an okay route runner. He's kind of lazy with his routes. Mm-hmm. But, but that can be taught. But, but he's probably... One of the best pass catchers in traffic in this class this year. Not only that, I have it. He tracks the deep ball well. He he. I think I said arguably the best hands, arguably the best hands mm-hmm. in this class. Now I will say, like, apparently he he has he had and somewhat still does have a draw draw problem. Uh, he improved as a catcher in twenty one, but he still had some drops. And, and that's gonna and they're happen. More focused drops with him. Right, right. He he has good hands, but. Yeah, you mentioned like he's not a great route runner. I have him here. He rounds off the route. And I said could improve on reading zone coverage, finding the open area. But his ability to run the deep route, mm-hmm. it provided a cushion for him to open up on the underneath routes. Right, and and with his good speed, uh, great speed, I would say, uh, he was used as a kick and punt returner. Mm-hmm. So that's another thing. Yeah, and I have it on here. He has a good run after catch ability. Yeah, he's not afraid to hit, get hit. He will fight for the extra yards. He's not afraid to get hit. He's not going to just run out of bounds after a 20-yard catch. He's going to try to score. And an interesting <laughs> note with him, he had the highest yards per catch in 2021. I believe it. I believe it. 17.3 yards per catch. I believe that. He tracks the deep ball well. Like I said, he, he to me was a very, very intriguing prospect. And he's got pretty decent size. Mm-hmm. He's not he's not a little little chump out there. Yep. Like, little so, like I said, as of right Matthews. now, He's definitely to me a wide uh, round three with upside. Like he has that chance to hit and be there for the long run. Yeah, and I and when I had him, I I said two nine and later, two dot nine and later. Yeah. So I have him as my fourteenth ranked wide receiver right now behind Khalil Shakir. I I can't argue with that. I cannot but argue with that. That's of Justin Ross. Yeah. Yeah. I just think Justin Ross had a bad senior year. It's possible, but I mean, we're going off the videos that we have, and right, right. now, I think Dubs not has a lot more of overall talent. No, you're, uh, yeah, we're on the same page here. Are we moving to our next yep. one? So our next one, North Dakota State University, <laughs> going, going up north, baby. Christian Watson, and he's a name that I've been starting to hear a little bit more lately, and I think I right now I have him marked as a late second, early third pick. He has good speed. I I would say he, he has breakaway speed. Okay. It, it's not necessarily in the route speed, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. But once he gets the ball, he's got speed. Yeah. I have good separation, mm-hmm. good run after catch. Yeah, I said elusive separation. He can get creative with routes to get open. Yeah, but I, I know what you're saying there. But I said his routes, he wouldn't mm-hmm. have to do that if his route running was smoother yeah. and crisper. Yeah. And – if the ball is near him, he goes all out to get it. Right. Like, 
he doesn't care where it is. He's laying his body on the line to catch that ball. He did have a couple drops that I've I noticed. And yeah. they were like easy deep ball catches. And you're like, how did – out of all those catches you just made, how did you drop those? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know. He's not afraid of contact either. No, no. I said he, he runs like a, a running back after the catch. He's a playmaker. Yeah, and, and basically I mean, everything he – I'm everything not saying else. these kind of guys can't stand out. They can't play in the NFL, but – it does scare me that he did play for a smaller school, North Dakota State. Yeah. And, you know, if you would have asked me about Derek Carrier in 2012, I would have said, this guy's a playmaker. He's going to score touchdowns because that's what he did at Willie College. But he maybe has five touchdown catches in his career. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. I mean, he's a tight end number one, so that's different. He's been playing behind guys like. Antonio, Darren Waller, Antonio Gates, Darren Waller, Jordan Reed. Uh, who was the? Uh, uh, there was another one out. In, yeah, uh, I know I could think of his name. But uh, I will say the smaller guys, Washington, the smaller school guys, you're not necessarily seeing the same competition you would in the Big Ten or the SEC, right? Or the ACC. Those any guys of those. are more FCS NFL ready. FCS is definitely. Mm-hmm. It's it's great competition, but it's not FBS so, competition. Yeah. While, right. while I'm I'm I like Christian Watson, I actually have him as my eleventh best receiver. <laughs> so a little higher than I thought I did. Wow, I wouldn't go that far. I I would put him eh, probably around out of this list I think, of guys. Uh, he'd be eighteen or nineteen. See, I think he's a little more refined than Khalil Shakir and Romeo Dubs. Mm-hmm. But and I think that's why I, I have him a little bit higher because he can come in and possibly play a little bit sooner based off of what I've seen. Okay, that's good. And this is still early, like we said. Draft hasn't happened. We have no idea in the draft capital. We have no idea where these guys are going. Yeah, uh, I'm not. If I'm ha- the last half of the third round, I might take a chance on him. Fair, but I'm not going any higher than that. Just because it's like I said, FCS and. Cooper Cup took three years to get where he is now. Yeah, but Cooper Cup was still actually very valuable for a while. He he was valuable, but he wasn't. He didn't have the year and, that he had well, this year. <laughs> you're still you still need those guys on your lineup. You, you, know, you still need those guys. You're to absolutely be a wide right. Receiver two, a wide you're, receiver three. You're absolutely right. But I think Cooper Cup did well in that system, the system that he's in. So and that's all. That's all it could be. Fair. Because how many other guys? Uh, who's the one from? Couple of other, ah, there's been other small school guys that have burst on the scene and yeah. gone to oh, definitely. here today, gone tomorrow. Definitely. All right, so we'll move on to our our la- actual last receiver for this one, Reggie Robinson Jr. from SMU. Um, what are your thoughts on him? Okay, so my notes were he he, I I don't know what the injury is, but I remember watching film on him in 2020. Uh, he injured his left knee. Um, before that injury, this guy was potentially a early, early to mid second team. Um, he didn't look quite the same when he came back from his injury, but this guy before the injury, great speed, great speed. Not, he, not quite there actually, after one the of brace. The I have on that is he's not physical. He wins with his speed. And and I don't know if that's going to be hurt because of this injury. And that's what really, really scares me. Um, he's a hustle guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, great concentration tracking the ball downfield on those deep throws. Yep, tracks ball well, but could have issues with contested catch. R- yeah, I said – did you steal my notes? But anyway, <laughs> I said he's elusive with superb speed. But that was before the injury. I didn't – I think I'll, they only had one game from 2021, if I remember Possibly, correctly. Yeah. Um, but he's a good hustle guy. He's a great he's a great hustle guy. An interesting note I had, and like I said, I didn't play a wide receiver. I didn't play skill position. I was the fat guy. We are aware. <laughs> uh, so I don't know how much this is going to impact his game. But at SMU, he only played from the left side of the ball. I never, I did not. And he did, like he did not go mo- motion much at all. And I don't know if that was just their offense. There was not much motion. I can't remember, but he was one of the guys that never went in motion. He played from strictly the left side of the ball. Okay. So I don't know if that's going to impact him being able to play multiple positions or what. 
Like before I saw that that injury, man, I mm-hmm. was like, dude, this dude's awesome. This dude's great. This guy's a steal in the third round. But right now, I have him ranked as my twentieth best receiver. I, and would, I have the no undrafted fourth or fifth round type guy. Yeah, I say not draft worthy, but could potentially be a free agent steal. That's what I have right here. And another thing is these lower type wide receivers, usually the way they're going to see the field and not be on the practice squad. Special teams. Special teams. He has not much experience in special teams at all. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so he's... Uh, he, one of the films I watched on him, he was returning punts. I don't know. I, I don't remember, but he's he's somebody, he's off my draft board. I don't and think that, and that And that's absolutely him. fair. But, and like I said, I literally say not draft worthy could potentially be a free agent steal or nothing or a bust. Uh, we don't know, man. Yeah. I, it, I feel for the kid because I thought he was – he looked amazing before that injury. And that's fair. I, I don't really remember him. I don't remember hearing his name much. Me neither. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. So that wraps up our second group of wide receivers that we're breaking down. Hey, our next six are pretty good. Yep. Next week, we've got Drake London, Garrett Wilson – Jalen Colbert, Colbert, Wandale Robinson, Sky Moore, and Calvin Austin the third. If you guys haven't heard of Wandale Robinson, the wide receiver from Kentucky, go watch this kid. He's a fun watch. Go YouTube this kid. It's W A N apostrophe D A L E Robinson R O B I N S O N, wide receiver from Kentucky. He is fun to freaking watch. But we'll get into that next week, man. That. Yeah, I remember you texted me like, hey, what do you think about this guy? I was like, I haven't watched him yet. I was like, he's a fun guy to watch. <laughs> and I, did, I didn't want to like him because he went to UK. And I don't have anything against UK football, but. No, me neither. It's yeah, just the name of the school. Yeah, Ducky. UK basketball. But this guy, like I said, he like we said, he was a fun watch. But we'll get more into him next week. Our first episode next week, we'll go with the wire, or with the wide receivers. Second one, we have seven running backs to go over and. I gotta start watching film on those guys. Yep, I actually finished my running back or running back film this week, so I'm hoping to start quarterbacks and. Oh man, I'm jealous because I just I get so tired with work. I can't can't, can't concentrate. It, it does get hard to concentrate, especially watching film. I think I can watch one. I can watch one group at a time, so six seven players at a time. <laughs> Shoot, for the wide receivers, I was usually watching like two a night. They they are hard, but I think the running backs will be a little bit easier. Oh yeah, running backs were a little uh, definitely easier to watch. Quarterbacks, I mean, that one's going to be interesting because wait till tight ends again. The NFL they can't they can't even get quarterbacks right. I don't know <laughs> <if> we can. <laughs> what do you mean the Browns can't get quarterbacks right? <laughs> yeah, and these tight ends we got ten of them. We're probably going to rattle through the, those guys pretty quick. But there's some interesting names there. Mm-hmm. So like I said, next week. Wide receiver, last group of wide receivers, first group of running backs. We got to that, two groups of running backs. After that, QB. We got to that, QB tight ends. And then we're, I think the next week after that, so that's the week of the NFL draft. Now. Three weeks from now. We're not going to record on Saturday initially. We're going to record one mock draft before the NFL draft. And then after the NFL draft, we're going to do one more mock draft after we know their location. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Well, once again, thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys learned something. Like- and remember, these these groupings of wide receivers have nothing to do with where we think they'll go, like in the actual draft or anything. It was just kind of like a random assortment. It was of- a little bit random, a little bit. I want to split up the number ones. Yeah, like we don't want to cover guys. all of the great names in day one, <laughs> so you guys don't come back in day two, day three. It's well, all that. It makes the groupings more interesting than going over a bunch of these guys aren't going to be any good schematics. <laughs> uh, but once again, thanks for tuning in. Like, subscribe, and share us on YouTube. Like us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I think you got them all. Check out our anchor or our podcast on Anchor, Spotify, Google podcast, Spotify, Google Podcast, Spotify, Anchor. And I think that's pretty much it. But like, share, get let's get our name out there, guys. I know we got some fans out there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we just gotta find them. <laughs> yeah, we gotta find them. But you guys have a good night, day, weekend, whatever it is you're listening to this and. Have fun. See you next time.